dogs go to heaven. But only one dog ever came back. Hello and welcome to I Can't Believe It's Not the Mouse, the podcast all about animated movies not made by Disney. I'm your host, Octaviano Macias, and today my voice is a little sore. I'm not sure if you'll notice it, uh, but if you notice it, that that's what it is. It, my voice is just a little sore, so I do apologize for that. Um, I'll try to do this as long as I normally do, but if it's shorter than usual, then that's why. Anyways, uh, today's movie is one that's, I'd say, fairly well known. I mean, it, it had a few sequels. It had a TV series. The title of the movie is, is fairly well known, but I'm not sure if that's been a saying beforehand or not. I feel like it's been a saying because I, I've seen stuff, you know, reference the title, but I've always been like, are they talking about the movie or is that just an actual saying? And I'm too lazy to actually check it up. But anyways, the movie is All Dogs Go to Heaven. If you're unfamiliar with that, it's the final Don Bluth movie from the 80s, if I'm not mistaken, because I know this one was released pretty much around the same time as Little Mermaid. In fact, it was released at the exact same time as Little Mermaid. It was the competition that week, and it was one of those things where it was like, you know, we might not realize it now just because... We know that The Little Mermaid is big. We, of course, know that Disney is a big company. But at that time, some people viewed this as the the really big movie that was coming out that week, while The Little Mermaid was the, the one that was crazy to go up against it. Because Don Bluth was doing pretty well at, at the time in the 80s, while The Little Mermaid, you know, being from Disney, I mean, sure, it's a, it's a well-known name, you know, Disney is, of course, known for animation. But at the time, they weren't exactly doing the best. Like, they were were doing well. It's just that the idea of this uh, going up against a Don Bluth movie wasn't the brightest idea because Don Bluth was pretty much more popular, so to speak, at at the time. Because I I know, for example, like, uh, granted, this was a couple of movies beforehand. Uh, Yeah, The Great Mouse Detective came out and didn't do so hot against, um, the car- no, 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 that was something else, no. The Great Mouse Detective came out, but it didn't do so hot, uh, is my point. It, it did fine, I mean, but it wasn't a big success that you would expect out of Disney, so, yeah, the idea that, you know, you had the Don Bluth versus Disney on the same day, nowadays, of course, it would be just be like, well, yeah, of course, Disney won. But at the time, it was like, yeah, Don Bluth might have this just because, yeah, Disney was not doing so hot at the time. But, you know, times change. And either way, whether it did well financially or not, the movie did well financially, of course, since um, it ended up getting sequels. And the show, like I said before, though, from my understanding, that was mostly a result of the home video sales. All Dogs Go to Heaven is still a fairly known movie amongst um, people, whether you're in animation circles or not. So yeah, I'm here to talk about what exactly is that. Um, Now, plot-wise, it's simple yet complex in terms of there's a lot going on in this movie. It it only runs for like about uh, 80 to 90 minutes, but in that time, there's so much going on that it's like, it almost feels like vignettes at times in terms of how the plot works out, but it's way too connected to be referred to that as properly, uh, you know, because there's a lot of plot threads in this movie that I, I wouldn't say don't get resolved, they, they do, it's just that they, um, it's like one thing leads to another and it's like, okay, that, that's crazy, because basically at the start of the movie, um, we get introduced to our main character, Charlie, voiced by Burt Reynolds, and his best friend, um, Itchy, voiced by uh, Dom Luis, who was a regular for um, Don Bluth movies. Charlie returns to his um, pretty much like old casino or pretty much a, that's kind of what it is. Like it's like a, like a racetrack with rats and whatnot, but you know, it's all for dogs. Where his co-owner, Carface, is pretty much already gotten him out off the, the business. Like he's stretched off his name and whatnot. Uh, apparently Charlie did some time. So... That's generally where we start at. 
Carface wants nothing to do with, with, with Charlie. He tells him, like, hey, get out of town. You know, leave the business to me. Charlie is not really convinced, but eventually, you know, he is convinced. Uh, but Carface doesn't just want to leave it at that. Like, just to make sure there's no loose ends, he decides to kill Charlie. Hence the title, Allah is going to heaven, because Charlie ends up going to heaven, because as um, the dog angel mentions, like, look, Dogs, um, by nature, are good, good and um, and loyal to people, so they're always going to heaven, regardless of how they they turn out. Charlie finds out that there's a whole thing in, in heaven regarding watches, where like uh, once your um, your time is up, you're, pretty much when once you die, your um, watch stops moving. So he's just like, okay, let me wind it up, and I'll be back in heaven. To which leads to like the main. Um, Pretty much like the main issue, I would say, like the main conflict in terms of uh, in that that part of the story, because he winded up his uh, um own time watch, because he's you know back back um in the land of the living, he's um pretty much warned by the angel like you can never come back if you die, you're pretty much gonna, gonna be guaranteed to go to hell, regardless of your dog status. So he goes back. He's like, okay, I'm gonna get some revenge on Carface. But finds out that Carface has been able to win money pretty much through this little girl that can talk to animals. So he always uses her to guess who's going to win in the races. Again, a lot of material that we're going through right here. Charlie and Itchy are able to get her. Itchy doesn't realize that Charlie actually died. Charlie's playing it off like he was able to survive the blow. But he's obsessed with keeping the watch on him just so he can always run of course Carface is mad and he pretty much disappears for like a chunk of the movie but you know that he's pretty much looming over or over the story like you know trying to figure out what happened to the girl he he had um so Charlie and Itchy get this girl uh, and pretty much um they start using her to win in other races like hor horse races dog races pretty much that kind of stuff you know they use the money to create their own casino. Eventually, Carface finds them uh, during some 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 arguments um, between Charlie and the girl because um, Charlie was pretty much like, "Oh yeah, we're like Robin Hood. We're giving the the money to the poor." But the girl, of course, realizes like, "No, you're not." Um, pretty much is is um, they they get lost at some point. They, there's an alligator that comes to the play. Uh, the girl starts getting sick with pneumonia. Carface ends up threatening Charlie through Itchy, which results in, in Charlie accidentally revealing that he's only using the girl in front of the girl. Pretty much from there, we get to the final act. It's a rescue mission, and Charlie accepts his fate while the little girl finally finds a family uh, of her own while she takes care of Itchy. I kind of glossed over a lot, but that's kind of a lot to go through, right? Like, for a 90-minute movie, like, you know, granted, some of it is, is pretty weird. Like, you know, the idea of, like, okay, the dog's running a casino, the alligator. It's all weird. I mean, the alligator, I know, has been talked about online as being one of the weirdest scenes. And, yeah, it's weird in the sense that it just kind of comes out of nowhere. But at the same time, there is, I would say, a reason for it. It, it does eventually pay off in many ways. Um... It is the tipping point of where we find out that the girl is getting sick, so that that becomes very important um, late late in the plot. Uh, the alligator does come back to help out in the end. Um, you get the great Kemp Page voicing the alligator, and you know it, it's fun stuff. You know I I can't complain. And because of a lot of that weird stuff, it did get a lot of criticism back when it came out. Uh, a lot of critics were basically like, yeah, there's not really much to the story. It just kind of happens. It's weird. It's strange. And yeah, yeah I can see that. But it is still a fairly well-told story. So I never really have a problem with it. If anything, uh, I don't think this is based on a book. But it feels like something that would be basically based on a collection of stories. Like, that's my takeaway on it. Because... It reminds me of a lot of, like, I would say, like, older Disney movies or just, like, a lot of um, movies that 
are based upon a collection of, of short stories where they try to tie in, you know, multiple segments from said book or stories um, into the into the movie just to basically be like, okay, people who read this remember this, they remember that. How do we connect it all into a story? That's kind of what it feels like, which I, I know it can be a turn off for some, but for the most part, I, I enjoyed it. I think it's a well done story. Um, I like how dark it, it can get with um, the main character being dead and they actually do acknowledge that when you see it, you get beat up by Carface. I mean, you don't see him, but you see the aftermath and you see him all bruised up and it's like, yeah, that's very intense. And it's not something that you would see with a lot of animated film, um, animated movies, whether it was back then or even now. And that's pretty much where a lot of the movie is also criticized, that it can be way too dark. I don't mind it. I think it's great. I think it lends itself a lot to its identity. And it's just just really satisfying seeing one of these movies, especially when it's aimed at kids, where the ending isn't. And then they decide to let Charlie live because he did the right thing. And it's like, no, his reward at the end is still just like, okay, you did the good thing. You did a good thing. You were willing to sacrifice yourself to save this girl. You can come back to heaven. And that's it. Charlie gets to say goodbye to the little girl, tells her to take care of it. She goes up to heaven. Um, to a point that even as the credits start rolling, they have to be like, okay, we gotta lighten up the mood by playing some happy music and, and whatnot. But it is just so satisfying to see, like, no, he he's, he's dead. He died. There's not gonna be a second chance. The, the closest thing you get to it is just the fact that we're, we're willing to let him come back to heaven and live happily ever after in the afterlife. That's his happy ending. He made his peace. He accepted it. That's great. It is a really touching way to go, and it's just surprising compared to a lot of other stuff that would have allowed him to live at least a little longer just for his sacrifice. But yeah, it's got, you know, dark moments. I know there's uh, an infamous, infamous sequence where he has a nightmare on, on being in hell. They don't shy away from it, and I know there was some stuff that they did have to tone down. For example, at some point in the movie, um, Carface and his um, and his goons try to shoot down Charlie with a ray gun, which is weird because the whole movie is pretty much like they even start off with like a specific year. I'm, I think it was like 1939 or something. But point is that um, th they do acknowledge that it's supposed to be in a specific year in the past. And then out of nowhere, it's like, oh, we, we got a ray gun. And it's like, like what? And I, I like how they try to play it off. Like, oh, yeah, it's a Flash Gordon um, atomic ray gun or something like that. So it's like, yeah, that would have been something that would have been around at the time. But as a toy, so why are they using a toy to hunt down Charlie? And the reason for that was because it originally was supposed to be just a regular Tommy gun. But, of course, they, they said, no, that's too much. We gotta have standards somewhere. We gotta limit it. It's just really satisfying to see how dark it can get, how mature it can be with the ending. The stuff that's weird is definitely weird. Um, the alligator. I mean, like I said, it's Ken Page. It's fun. It's. I, I can't really complain about that stuff. I mean, realistically, if I had any issues with the movie, it's that yes, some of it has probably not aged as well. Not a whole lot to a point that it, it ruins it, but it is to a point where it's like, okay, this is going to grind it to a halt when you're watching it with, with kids or or people who have never seen it who are from certain backgrounds. Because yeah, I, I know like the main image that you'll probably see is, oh, look, um, Itchy starts looking kind of stereotypically Asian early on in one of the songs. And speaking on the songs, most of them aren't so great. Uh... And part of the problem is that you have, um, it's something that I respect and I enjoy, but at the same time, I get why people wouldn't. And it is technically a flaw in it in terms of basically, yeah, Burt Reynolds, 
who, you know, great actor, and he does a great voice um, in this movie. But when it comes to singing, not so much, which is even weirder when the alligator mentions, like, oh, yeah, he has a great singing voice. I'm like, does he, though? I don't think so. Pretty much they were like, okay, if a character's going to be, you know, doing the voice, if, a, if an actor's doing a voice for this character, they're also going to do the singing part, which doesn't always happen. A lot of times they'll have someone else do the singing voice. I know it was very common for Disney during the 90s, during the Renaissance, where you'd have the singing voice and the acting voice. Um, in this, it's all just one person um, for, for each role, and... I mean, I respect it. I, I normally pr prefer that they have the same person doing both just because when it comes to people doing like the whole singing voice, it can be a bit distracting because it's like, okay, I noticed that this person doesn't sound the same as that person. Like, you know, they're trying, but it's to a point where I'm like, why don't you just get the person who could sing to, to do the rest of it? And I know that's not always an option, but... I don't know, it's just a thing that plays in my mind. And no disrespect to anyone who's ever been in that position because oftentimes there are, you know, the, both the singing voice and the acting voice are really good in it. It's just, I don't know, I guess my nitpicky mind on that. Just because, yeah, I, I just, I don't know, I, I just feel like it'd be more natural to have one voice all the way through. Because oftentimes I do pick up right away, like, yeah, that's someone else doing that voice. And it, it, it kind of takes me off. Um, not enough to ruin it. I mean, it's, most of the time I try to ignore my, ignore it just so I can, you know, continue watching it. But it, it is something that bothers me a little bit. So I appreciate it on that level. But at the same time, yeah, I, I can acknowledge that Reynolds is not that great of a singing, uh, did not have that great of a singing voice. So if they wanted to do it, I would have understood. But yeah, I don't know. I appreciate it. But it is, it is there. It, it is a flaw. Of course, I don't want to touch on this too much just because this is really not about that, but it is kind of sad and it, it is something to, to notice. Um, so most people will probably know, like, okay, um, in this franchise, because um, they, they made the sequel, uh, the pretty much two sequels because there was, like, the, the theatrical sequel, I, I believe it was theatrical, and then there was um, the Christmas one. Uh, that was straight to video, and then there was a show, which was always kind of weird because with those, um, you have Charlie back, but I, I think it was like he was supposed to be a guardian angel or something, and it was constantly like, okay, we're sending him on missions to um, fix stuff. And of course, they do have some of the other char characters come back, but not the main girl in this movie, and there's a reason for that. I'm not going to go into de to detail, but the reason why they didn't bring back um, the little girl in this from this movie and the, the other stuff isn't a matter of like, okay, we just kind of forgot about it or we just didn't like Anne-Marie, that's, that's a girl. It's because it was done out of respect for the actress who voiced um, the character, Judith Barzi, uh, who, if you don't know, was also the voice in one of the other um, Don Bluth movies, um, at least most people remember for this one specifically she was ducky um for the land before time and if you know anything about that you know what very sad thing happened that happened to her pretty much uh she was murdered by by her father i i don't want to get into too much um i mean it's sad it's unfortunate um if there is some sort of afterlife or anything i, I hope she does um continues to, to rest in peace uh it just is such a tragic end sad and it, it does kind of loom over this movie once you know that because you just feel sad like okay this is a very cute character a very fun character to, to be with but now you're just thinking about what exactly happened especially because it happened during the production of this movie um they, they even have like a I believe like a, an, a memorial song that they did at the end of this. I think that that was the point of that, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and of course, it gets even sadder when you realize that pretty much the, the three main characters, um, her, Itchy, Charlie, are all now voiced by actors that are gone. And of course, that that's pretty much the, the case of a lot of older movies. It just I don't I don't know. I, I guess it just feels sadder now knowing that. Like, hey, look, even by the time this thing came out, 
that was true for one of the characters, and it's just, I, I don't know, it was the thing that made me kind of sad um, as I was watching this. It's just that that stayed in the back of my mind, knowing about that whole situation. Um, I don't want to go into too, too much detail, like I said, um, but if you're interested in finding out more on what happened there, it is, it's pretty much widely known information online. I, I, I don't know. It's just sad, but I don't know. It's kind of tragic realizing it given just how, how dark and yeah, it's just hard, dark, dark and depressing. That is in contrast to this pretty lighthearted movie, despite having dark elements. Um, it's sad. It's mm. anyways. So I don't know if I can really say much more after that. Um, honestly. The only reason why I bring it up is because I feel like if I didn't, I would probably have people um, mentioning it. Maybe in the comments section, maybe either messaging me and like, hey, did you know this? And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm aware. So I figured might as well say that. Um, I don't want to close off on a depressing note, so I don't know. The only thing I, I, I can really say is that in regards to everything, yeah, All Dogs Go to Heaven, certainly a really good movie, and it's definitely worth watching. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's on HBO Max r right now, so it's not it's not hard to find. Um, you'll, you'll get a lot of fun out of it. Pert Reynolds as Charlie is great, which just further reminds me that you know, even though it's often credited to Aladdin with Genie, they were doing celebrity voices beforehand. I mean, it's just, I guess with that one is when they really wanted to push it into marketing, but I, I don't know. There was even some marketing stuff with with a lot of the movies beforehand that, that pushed for it. So it's not like it's never been a thing. It's it's always been there. It's just, I guess at a certain point, they tipped it to do it much more often. I personally don't mind because you know it's it's fun it you know celebrity voices can be fun to stuff celebrity voices can be fun to stuff if they're done well if they're intended to be right there and not just because the studio decided hey we gotta have a celebrity to voice the stuff you know when they're, when they're implemented well they're implemented well so I I, I don't know I, I don't complain about that stuff um, I don't know that's a great way to end it off so either way I'll, I'll close it off there you know all dogs go to heaven great movie really fun one uh definitely i would say the last don bluff movie that is truly great um just because everything afterwards is either hit or miss and most of it miss like the ones that are are better like anastasia Titan AE is all right. For the most part, you know, are fine, but they don't um, hit as well. So, yeah, that, that's like all, all I got. Um, so, thank you for listening. This has been Octaviano Macias, host of I Can't Believe It's Not the Mouse. If you enjoyed this, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Sycam Films, or you can always support me on my Patreon. That's www.patreon.com slash Psychams. S-A-I-C-A-M-S. www.patreon.com slash Psychams. Uh, supporting me there helps me do the show. It helps me live, pretty much. So, um, just do it. There's not really much beyond getting your name on the credits for these over time. As more support grows, I, I do plan to include more more stuff um, to it. Like, I I am hoping to get a, a, a viewer um, poll on what to do for certain certain weeks, um, just to keep things interesting and just to service the fans. Um, maybe a behind the scenes look, some stuff like that. I, I, I would like to see. 
um, done, but it's something that I, I want to do further down when there's more people involved with this. Either way, I hope you enjoy this. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week. Will I ever see you again? Sure. Sure you will, kid. You know, goodbyes aren't forever. Hey, just wanted to say thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. Comment below if you had any thoughts on this. And if you want to support me even more, there's always the option of Patreon. Yes, I have a Patreon. Patreon would be a great way to help me grow this channel as it's a great way to get equipment, a great way to let me know what you guys like, and it's a great way to help me financially. Just saying, the more I have on Patreon, the more time I'll have for these videos. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.